May 2, 2009, Las Vegas, Nevada. All sports fans flocked to TV screens as Ricky Hatton and Manny Pacquiao met at the legendary MGM Grand Arena. The IBO belt was at stake, but the two had long outgrown the title first level, and only in the second round many were left with a wondering question that evening. How? How did this little Filipino manage to cut down the Briton so easily, just hitting him in the lower jaw? Ricky instantly lost consciousness and, of course, could not get up. Moving away from the euphoria of the spectacular knockout, fans of this sport asked themselves the question, why does a blow to the lower jaw lead to a knockout? Some started talking about a kind of mysterious point. Others insisted that the Briton, in fighting slang, had already been punched by Floyd Mayweather, while others argued that Hatton just needed to pump up his jaw. So who is right? And does this miracle point exist? Let's try to figure it out. Boxers, mixed martial arts fighters, and representatives of other contact sports know very well that by taking a blow to the chin, you can literally be knocked out without even feeling pain. Having taken such a blow, consciousness is completely turned off for a while. So, as it turns out that an accurate hit, even not a very strong one, can lead to a knockdown and sometimes a knockout. But why is this happening? More on that later. We all remember Archimedes well when he said that with the help of an appropriate fulcrum, he would turn the globe over. Having a fulcrum with a long lever, you could move huge objects and the larger this lever, the less effort is required. The fact is that the brain is located in the upper part of the skull and the chin is diametrically opposite, being in fact the very lever with which you can multiply the effect. A blow to the lower jaw leads to a sharp displacement of the skull and stretching of the meninges. Next, the brain itself moves by inertia and hits the bony structures of the skull. In addition, a blow to the chin shakes the back of the head, where the head attaches to the neck and where the main control center of coordination of movements and muscle tone is located the brainstem, and the cerebellum. But that's not all. The lower jaw is located next to the ear, and the inner ear, as you know, is also an organ of balance. As a result, a person that gets knocked out is not due to injury, but due to a sharp overload and disruption of the main centers of coordination. Many professionals believe that the most vulnerable area on the body is the entire lower jaw, if we do not take into account the parental lobe of the head. So. If we draw an abstract vertical line down to the corner of the mouth, then we will find the very victory point. And in principle, many knockouts confirm this idea, although there were not so many of them. Mixed martial arts fighter Quentin Jackson found himself in a similar spot as Manny Pacquiao with his final blow, instantly sending Wanderlei Silva's brain to a long reboot. The Brazilian was able to recover after a couple of minutes. But no matter how scary it looks, when the fighters lie immobilized and look through the ceiling, such a knockout is considered one of the safest. Many professional cutsmen speak about this. In boxing, concussions happen very often, and if we talk about lethal outcomes, then not everything is so simple. For example, there was a case when one boxer spent many sparrings where he missed punches from an opponent in another weight class. When he entered the ring, he was knocked out and died as a result of a cerebral hemorrhage, but not in the ring, but in the hospital. At the World Boxing Council convention attended by neurosurgeons and other experts in the field, boxing was recognized as a dangerous sport, but with a number of nuances. One of the dangers to the brain lies in the choice of equipment. Many people think that if they choose the safest gloves, then the blows will not be so traumatic. But most knockouts do not come from blows to the head, but from a precise hit to the jaw. This is the most harmless blow for the brain, because a sharp impulse goes to the brain along with nerve endings, a flash occurs, and the boxer is knocked out. It is much more harmful to the brain when an athlete takes a lot of blows to the head. It is much better to take a hit to the jaw once, than to miss the jaw and take numerous hits to the head throughout the fight. And now the question arises, can you still maintain balance and consciousness after such a blow? Well, let's find out. 
In boxing and in MMA, there is such a thing as a glass chin. Often such nicknames are assigned by fans to some fighters who can't hold a punch. To this day, there is a lot of controversy about it. Someone says that the fighter is already punched, others believe the whole thing is in the genetics and physiological characteristics of this or that person. But current boxing star Mexican Saul Alvarez believes that the jaw should be trained like the neck. Fan favorite Canelo strengthens his jaw by lifting a towel with weights. I work with a weight lifting it with my mouth to strengthen my neck and jaw. That way, even if I miss a punch, it will not be easy to knock me out. Professional cutmans, in turn, are more of the physiological opinion. They believe that this is the physiological feature if, for example, little attention is paid to the vestibular apparatus during training. In some boxing gyms, a special exercise is practiced. The guys raise their finger up, look at it, and spin for a minute, and after that they start shadow boxing in pairs, fighting dizziness and adapting their brain. Now, if little attention was paid to this in childhood, then a person can really take a punch badly. But this can be trained. You just need to do more rotational movements like acrobats or gymnasts. By the way, they have a strong head because the cerebellum is adapted to this. The impenetrability of the Diaz brothers speaks in favor of this opinion. Nate and Nick are not gifted with the same kind of powerful body, wide neck, and trapezoids. They do not pump up their jaws like Saul Alvarez, and at the same time they have perfectly taken blows for a couple of decades. In the world of MMA, they are even legends about their impenetrable jaws. The only exception is one fight of the younger brother, but it should be noted that his lights were not turned off. It is believed that pumped up jaw muscles can only save the bone from a fracture, but not from a knockout. A striking example of this is from fighter Melvin Manoff. He's significantly superior in physique to the Diaz brothers, right? But the muscles in a pumped up neck and jaw did not really save him in many fights, as in this case. An accurate hit on the very spot from Alexander Shlominko and good night. Therefore, coaches advise developing the vestibular apparatus, which will help keep yourself on your feet, even with a flurry of missed punches, so you can always be aware of where you are. The physics of hitting the lower jaw has not yet been thoroughly studied, but in any case, as professional boxers advise, there is nothing better than keeping your arms high and pressing your chin to your chest. What do you think about this? Do you consider a blow to the jaw the most harmless blow? Waiting for your opinion in the comments. And of course, don't forget to put like if you like this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.